My name is Josh Matakor. I'm a cybersecurity professional. I own and operate a cyber range as well as a cybersecurity internship program, so ask me about that. But today, I'm going to be giving away this free Anki deck full of cybersecurity practice interview questions. Basically, um, this deck requires a bit of explaining, so I'll just try to explain it as fast as I can so you can get on with your day. This requires you to download and install an application called Anki, which looks like this. And then after you install it, you can just basically go to File and then Import or you can click import file down here and then you just simply uh, import the deck that you downloaded in the description of this video. And basically I'm gonna explain these interview questions and explain what's in the deck um, so it makes the most sense. But basically the way Anki works, um, it's just a bunch of flashcards, right? And it will show you the flashcards. So for example, if I uh, click on this framework and regulatory body and I start studying it, for example, like what are some key objectives of PCI DSS? And then you'll think about it in your head. And if you're familiar with PCI and you feel like you can answer it well, like you would say show answer. And if you feel good about the way you can answer it, you understand PCI, and you have like a good formulation of how to answer it. You would say like uh, maybe easy or good. But if you have no idea, you would take this question and then you would research like a good way to answer it. I put a few examples of some different ways you might answer it, right? But this, the way this deck is meant to be used is you're not supposed to like memorize these answers and be like, oh, okay, uh, if somebody asks me this question, uh, I need to like respond in this way. Like it's, that's not how to like use this deck. Um, basically for all these questions, if you can research and then formulate a good answer and then verbalize it like out loud, um, that's what I want you to do, because the more you do that, the more you, the more questions you're exposed to, and the more you research the questions and you understand and verbalize your answer to the question, it's going to be much easier for you when you actually go to the interview, um, if that makes sense. So the whole purpose of this is like obviously to get good at interviewing, but at the same time, imagine like if you go through all of these questions, it's going to fill a lot of random gaps in your cybersecurity knowledge, if that makes sense. So some of these questions, for example, this verified FANG, uh, various security engineer interviews. A while ago, I went on like blind and glass door and I tried to aggregate as many big tech cybersecurity engineering interview questions as I could. So everything in this particular deck is like verified to have been asked in either like Google, Facebook, Apple, uh, Amazon, or like whatever the other one, uh, I guess Meta, which is Facebook or Microsoft. Um, all of the questions in here are pertain to those places, just FYI. And the way that I intended for this to be used is you would like read the question, for example, and then you would go and research about it, like research the proper way to answer it, and then you would click edit. And then you can edit the note with your own notes, if that makes sense. So you can like kind of learn how you would answer it and then practice articulating it in the same way, as opposed to memorizing something. I really want you to understand and research and think about how you would answer the questions and like use ChatGPT, use Google, like use people in the cyber community as well, if you want to, and then you would make your notes. So for example, for me, for this question, um, if a security breach were to occur, describe the steps you would take to mitigate the issue. This is like a really generic question, but it was a FANG question or like a big tech question. So I might say something like, um, this is, might sound a bit advanced, but I might say like, you know, answer in accordance um, for me, this makes sense. So you would like research how to answer it and then put your notes in here. And then, so the next time you came across it, you can see like your, your notes in here. So you can think about how you would answer those questions, if that makes sense. And then going back, um, these are just technical interview questions, kind of generic entry level-ish cybersecurity interview, interview questions. These star questions, uh, star means situation, task, action, and result. And this is how you're supposed to answer behavior-based questions. And this, this happens a lot when you start interviewing for jobs that are around 100K or more than 100K or any of those big tech jobs, um, especially Amazon, they're gonna expect you to answer in star format. So basically what this looks like, tell me about a time when you had to quickly learn a new security technology or tool uh, to solve an immediate problem, how did it go? And then this is where you think about the situation, the task at hand, the action that you did to like solve the thing and then the result of your action. So you would formulate your answer um, in a star format for all of the interview questions that start with star. And of course, I, I put like just random stuff in here. Um, this is not in star format, but it's just different things that you can use to think about how you'd formulate your answer to it, if this makes sense. So for all the star questions, I would recommend that you edit these and then think about a situation and then you might, you know, come up with something like this. So you, you have like the situations in your head. So when someone asks you about those or something similar, it's gonna be much easier for you to um, formulate an answer, if that makes sense. 
And then framework and regulatory questions. This is about framework and regulatory stuff like NIST, all the NIST publications like 853, 837, um, like HIPAA, the Health Information Portability and Accountability Act, I think. And then PCI DSS, like all those like regulatory stuff type of questions are in here. So what are some key objectives of PCI DSS? And then there's some like, you know, stuff here where you can think about how to formulate an answer, use ChatGPT to come up with something good. The idea is not that somebody's going to ask you these exact particular questions per se, but if you practice these, for example, there's like 150, and if you get really good at answering these 150 questions, anything like kind of ancillary or related is going to be not easy, but it's kind of fair game and it's going to be easy, easier for you to answer, if that makes sense. And then these questions, these cyber range specific questions. So these questions are specific to the technology and enterprise security tools that we use in the cyber range. Vulnerability management project you work on and how do you handle it? And then the cyber range specific questions I put uh, for some of them anyway, or most of them, I I put something in here that I think would be like a, an appropriate answer or something that, that might make sense if you were answering about the cyber range. So for example, if you went to internship, for instance, and you worked with Tenable Vulnerability Management and then somebody asks you like some kind of question like this, this is how I might answer that question um, if I was a member of the cyber range who went through the, the internship. And there's more, I, I try to do them for everyone, um, every single question. Right, answering it as it pertains to the cyber range, if that makes sense. So for example, how have you handled endpoint isolation and remediation using Defender for Endpoint? And I kind of like give a bit of a, an example down here. And I, I talk about something that, you know, only somebody who has worked with that thing, who understands those nuance might say like, oh, you have to be careful with um, endpoint isolation with the Defender for Endpoint, because if you make a rule, it's possible to isolate like all of your endpoints on accident. So if you say something like that to the interviewer, it might be good. So if you're interested, if you're not in the cyber range already, like I have two communities, one of them is free, it's a cyber community. Um, you can learn quite a bit of stuff in there and it's really useful and there's like the whole community aspect that's free. And then I have the cyber range where we have like an actual live work environment. When you sign up, you get uh, credentials emailed to you and then you have access to a bunch of security tools. Um, you have access to my company's Azure tenant as well as Tenable, which is a vulnerability management platform and then Sentinel, which is a SIM. It's pretty much like a normal work environment. And then there's like courses on top of it where you can um, learn how to use the different security tools and learn how to do the stuff in the environment. And there's also a, an internship component where you can get actual experience to go on your resume and LinkedIn. And it, that has helped quite a bit. Um, I do, I regularly do a lot of employment verification for people who've gone through the internship. Um, so it actually does work. And um, yeah, it really helps a lot. So definitely check it out. Either way, feel free to download the free practice questions and go through them because these will definitely help when it comes time to interview. So thanks for watching. We'll put links for everything in the description and we will see you in the next video.